my hand all these, all these years down here, and I know he's going to hold my hand all the way into glory. If you would, let's stand and let's fellowship for just a moment. Shake hands with each other. Our visitors, make sure you welcome them. And uh, show somebody the love of the Lord this morning. direction in our lives. Huh? Guess that's working out. Um, but anyways, uh, I had this song on my heart for the last couple of weeks. I've been sick for a long time. When you can't breathe well, you can't sing very well either. So um, I've just tried to hold it in. And But I really feel like that, you know, God gives us talents and he wants us to use them to lay them on the altar for him. And so I'm not trying to do this to get any glory, and y'all know that. I've been here a minute. Um, I want to learn new songs, and I keep not doing that. And so I keep thinking, well, everybody's going to get tired of these same old ones. And I'm sorry if that's the case, but I've had this song on my heart a while, so we're just going to sing it. Because one of these days, we ain't going to have to put up with this stuff down here anymore. Oh, I can't wait. I've never heard of so many people passing away. And uh, one thing I know have a better place ahead all the rest of eternity I get to just praise the Lord I don't have to worry I don't have to cry I don't have to be sad I don't have to hurt y'all we're going to a good place but the devil keeps throwing things in our path that makes us not realize that we it, it takes our minds off of what we got coming but this song what a day that will be there is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears will dim our eyes. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face that one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrows there and no more burdens to bear no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with that one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall 
see and I look upon his face that one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see and i look upon his face that one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be morning. Glad to see you in the house today. I appreciate the visitors being here. Hope you feel at home. And, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning if you have a testimony on your heart. Go ahead and share that before I get started.
one in. Amen. Not you got your Bible if you're turning to Deuteronomy uh, chapter four. Deuteronomy chapter. Start reading in. Uh, I'm gonna read down to verse 40 this morning. Deuteronomy 4, verse 32 says, "For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other." whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard and lived? Or hath God assayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out in the, his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art and to bring thee in to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments. That thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Let's pray. Our dear, most gracious, and wonderful Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we just uh, beset you, Lord, that you would just come down for a little while. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit this morning. We pray, God, that it will just continue to walk up and down aisles and up and down pews, Lord, that you would speak to hearts. And we pray, God, this morning that if someone here doesn't know you in a free pardon of sin, that the Holy Spirit will knock on their heart and know that they are loved above all men and women upon the face of the earth, because Jesus Christ has died for them just like he died for us, Lord. And I love you this morning, Lord, and I pray, God, and, and I've asked you all week, Lord, that you just be here today, that you just take over, Lord, the service, 
that the Holy Spirit would just guide and direct through everything. We love you. We thank you, Lord. Most of all, I thank you, Lord, that you're God and no one else is. And you love us and you take care of us. And I pray, Lord, that we see that and just draw closer to you today. I love you, Jesus, once again. And I ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. I want to ask you a question this morning that got on my mind this week. I want to know a show of hands other than today. Have you felt the Spirit of God throughout this week from last Sunday till Saturday? Has He come by? All right. I think that we're living in a time, and what's on my heart this morning is for us to have a revival. A, a revival, in a sense, individually and, and also as a church, and eventually get to the place where it meets and it exceeds. I want the Lord to pour out those things that He has in store for us that you and I cannot hold. Uh, it is not any different than uh, days of old, the way that you used to hear a uh, preachers preaching and people calling out, I've heard this all my life and I've said this here already before and some of you are older and you understand this and you know this, but for us, uh, or some of the younger generation, they have not experienced it in this life uh, because they're too young and not experienced it in their life. Uh, so we see and we need this this morning. We need the Lord to pour out our spirit upon us. Now there's something that has to happen to you and I. Uh, God is perfect. He is pure. He is true. If anybody, and I've said this many times, if anybody is away from the Lord, it's not because he moved. It's because of you and I. And as a church, and eventually, uh, maybe hopefully one day here soon, we'll have a revival and we can reach people that are outside the church. That's my desire, that people get saved, to have a desire uh, to worship the Lord this morning. But we see here in the Scriptures, I want you to see something here, that, that in time, in days that are past, which was before you, the days that create, God had created man upon the earth and asked from one side of the heaven to the other, has there ever been a time like this? Now you may say, well, uh, that he walked with Moses and uh, he brought the uh, Israel, the Jewish children out of Egypt and brought them over into Canaan land. Uh, yes, sir, he did. I don't doubt that one bit. Uh, but where he talks about, uh, there's a voice that comes from heaven that speaks and those that have seen him by the fire uh, have you ever experienced a voice from heaven uh, you have if you've been a child of God this morning uh, you at least have experienced it one time but we need to have that on a daily walk we need to be, have a draw close to God this morning and we need that I need it in my own life I desire it I want us to leave here that we have gone out and we can say that we have being in the house of the Lord, but I want you to take it with you through the weeks ahead. That Lord help me draw closer to you. Uh, I I have studied and I have read. You know, you, you we as a people, I'm talking about human beings. Boy, we like to check things off, don't we? We'll leave our kids ch uh, chores to do. Mama, I got them done. You can see them. I checked them off. Made my bed. I took the trash out. But God doesn't work that way. Uh, we sometimes think that we can do certain things and God will show up because look at what I've done, God. But I've learned something, and I want to share it with you this morning. For you and I to have revival in our own lives and as a church, there's not but one way. And we're going to look at it this morning. We're going, we, I, I'm going to get to uh, verse 40 in a minute. Oh, there's statues and commandments. Uh, but you shouldn't want to have to do them because God said, I'm just checking them all. The difference between God and someone else, maybe your employer, is the fact of this, that God loves you. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. Who has saved and done the things in your life uh, 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 as great as God has in your life? No one. Uh, he's the greatest thing that is in your life today. And we should cherish Him and love Him. That's why I do the things I do. 
Uh, that, that's why God uh, uh, gives us those things. It's not because God said do not steal, that I don't steal. Yes, that is true. He said that. But I don't do it because God said it, yeah. But I do it because in my heart, I don't want to do it because I do not want to hurt my Jesus this morning. Uh, we've got to get to the point and understand that sin is a black thing upon us uh, as a people and as a nation. And God don't overlook it. Uh, or you may scoop it under a rug so that no one else sees it this morning. But God sees every bit of it. Uh, this morning, I want us to see, uh, is there anybody like Jesus Christ who come from the heavens down uh, to die for my sins and yours? Uh, is there a God that you would like to serve? Uh, uh, maybe you could go out and get one. Uh, you need to just hop on the rug and go on and trust it then. Uh, maybe, but I can tell you right now, it's made by hand. It may be a pitcher of gold. It may be a vehicle. It may be money, but I can promise you this. Everything exists is made by man except things that God gives us. Eternal life this morning in our hearts this morning. We have that. Uh, uh, is there anyone like God that has brought the Jewish people out of Egypt? A good picture of our sin, so I wasn't a Jew. Uh, but you were in Egypt, all right, just like I was, in a dark, dingy, sinful place. It's representative of that time uh, in our life that we uh, don't want to talk about anymore. Oh, uh, we had our, uh, Paul talked about, we all had our day, so to speak, in times past, in the filthiness of the world. Uh, you're a liar, you're a stealer, uh, you're, you're an adulterer, you're, uh, you're, you're a, a false prophet, you're doing all kinds of things against the Lord. And we all had our part in times past. But glory. Glory to the highest, to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, who came to take us away and take us to a heavenly home someday and redeem us from a hell uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we have that. We've got the arm uh, out of the arm of God here, out of heaven made to hear the voice that might instruct us to do us. But if we don't have a communication this morning with the Lord, Oh, we don't know what to do. Oh, and it's so important this morning for our prayer life uh, to be stepped up higher than it's ever been. Uh, that's what's wrong with the church in, sin, in general. Uh, we don't have no power no more. I'm not just talking about Mount Carmel. I'm talking about everywhere. Uh, God's people don't have power no more because God's not sending it to a people that dibble-dabby in on sin. And then come to church on Sunday. Social club. This is not just a get together. to swap cards so you can do business with one another. It is a place of godly, God's holy name dwells here. And I think Brother Fred mentioned it in our Sunday school this morning. But I want to talk to you some just about that subject for real quick. The fear of God has been gone. Unlike, uh, like God in some sense though, thinking that we know more than the creator uh, I've often said and I tell myself this uh, sometimes I, I remember reading a prayer from a, 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 a gentleman and at the end he said you're God and I'm not that's probably the best thing you can say uh, uh, to mean it and to know this morning but I want us to look this morning Know therefore this day and consider in thine heart, in your heart. Faith that you have, the hope that you have in Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, Paul, Paul talks about the, the hope that we have. Uh, once we get there and we see him, uh, I no longer hope for it. Uh, when my step into glory, when I leave this world, I'll not hope about heaven anymore because I'll be there. Uh, maybe hopefully he'll show me around. I don't know if he's going to address and have angels uh, lead me around, but I want to see Jesus, and I want to see uh, his nail-scarred hands. I want to see the one that died for me. I want to bow down to him. I try to do that on this side. 
this side of heaven. Uh, but I want us to look this morning in verse 40. Uh, he said, Thou shalt keep therefore his statue and his commandment. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy and uh, Leviticus in the Old Testament uh, speaks greatly about the Lord God. Uh, and I think we make light of it uh, uh, today. But do not profane the Lord's name. Uh, uh, treat it so holy. And I think we live in a time that uh, it is, it is many, it's mentioned different ways this morning. But uh, the fact is that we're supposed to treat it as holy. You ever heard someone said, I promise Jesus, not really meaning it? You ought not do that. You shouldn't do that. Uh, oh, well, this morning, we know the Ten Commandments. Uh, uh, I think it's something that we need to bring to heart, though. Uh, do not, uh, uh, no other gods before me. Uh, it, it, he's the only God there is this morning. Uh, he's the only one you need to worship this morning. Uh, no one else. Uh, Satan wants to be worshipped. Uh, different things, people sometimes want to be worshipped. Sports figures in some sense are lifted up high to a certain level. Uh, but there's no one that deserves worship more than God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Them three being one. Uh, you ought to be thankful this morning that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life uh, this morning. But it's because of God who orchestrated this from eternity past uh, and said, let us go down. Uh, let us go and make uh, Adam. Let us do these things. Let us create human race. Let us go down. Uh, let us, uh, Jesus said, let us go down. The Lord God the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Spirit was there on Mount Calvary, and everything worked together so that the blood that was shed for you and I not a drop of it was lost. It was all carried to an altar up in heaven, proceeded into the holy of holies, and God has got it today for you and I. That blood has been applied to your life if you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. It's applied to your life. If you don't have the blood of Jesus in your life, you'll never make it into heaven. I don't care how good you are, what material gains you've got, I don't care where you come from, what your name is. I don't care if you're poor, if you're rich. You'll never enter into the gate without Jesus Christ's blood this morning. Uh, this morning. But there's no other gods before me. There's no graven image uh, that we should use as spiritual. It is a, it's a fact. Uh, uh, people take many things and worship them this morning. But the Lord is the only, as I said this morning, is to take that. Uh, and worship the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father only. Uh, shall not, we're not to take the Lord God's name in vain. I already said about the promise to Jesus. Where we got a careless use of it today. Uh, it ain't all just profanity. Uh, that's the worst. I hate to hear that. Uh, I, I'm in a place in my life that I'm fortunate that I don't hear it. But you that work in a public job, sometimes you hear those kinds of talks. Uh, but God, they, they do it out of ignorance maybe some. Uh, not knowing who they're, what they're talking about. Uh, but we're not to take the Lord's name in vain this morning. Oh, uh, there's no uh, point here, no uh, clear or good prayer. And not listen to me uh, this morning. In our prayer time, we've got to have a purpose in our prayer. Uh, I can go home or this afternoon go eat some lunch. Uh, I hope none of your stomach's growling already. Uh, but the fact of it is, uh, you may say your prayer. You've got to mean it. Or it ain't a prayer. I think that's what's going on with the church today. I can say, Lord, bless this food. Uh, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, amen. I didn't go no higher up than my cap that I wear. We've got to get earnest with the Lord. We've got to get down and start begging the Lord. Oh uh, Lord, you, uh, we don't deserve the Lord. That's the thing. We don't deserve the Lord this morning. If he's come, come by and spoke to you this morning, you didn't deserve it this morning. Uh, you didn't deserve it when I felt him when the singing was going on. 
You didn't deserve it this morning. It's by His grace and His mercy, out of His love for you and I, that I'll come by today. I'll come by today. It's, but we've got to get a hold of the, you know, it's like the woman uh, that had an issue. Uh, I just got to touch the hem of his garment and everything will be fine. That's the way we need to do with our prayer life. Lord, just get me close enough if I can just touch it and just breeze blind, just barely hit it on his way by. If I can touch it, it's going to be good because I've got that close to the Lord. We've got to get in touch with him this morning. There's people dying and going to hell, folks. We're interested in putting money in the bank. We're interested in uh, 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 where we're going on vacation in the summer. We're interested in other things in life. And yet people die every day, never to have another chance, uh, to have an opportunity to hear the Word of God, and uh, most of all, to hear the Holy Spirit speak to their heart. It's not just the preacher, folks. I'd share with you. Read the scripture until the Holy Spirit takes it and puts it and applies it to your life. You'll never move a bit. You'll never move. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this. I believe you'll back up further. You'll, you'll lose ground. Till God manifests himself and shines a light on you. We want to try to, the devil's slick, boy. He, he, he just, oh, don't say nothing. Don't, don't say nothing at work now. These people don't, don't, want to, don't want to talk about it. That's not politically correct. You'll be in the boss's office. You may lose your job. He'll send all kinds of things through your life. You may do lose your job. But God's got something else in plan for you if he does. See, I, I've finally learned very little, but I serve a creator that hangs the stars, that makes the earth move. And if he wants David, at Mount Carmel, I'm happy as a lark because I am. If there's a day come and he says, David, I want you here, that's where I'll go. I hope I retire here. I'm telling you up front. But we've got to get into a place where God works in our life. We don't sleep at night. Not all night no more. Why? So I can be a better pastor and a better preacher. And so I just use it to draw close to him. He ain't pushed you away this morning. He said, come unto me. All you that are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He's my Jesus. He's my best friend. He's the one that just lead and I'll follow, Lord. Just lead and I'll follow. This morning, we live in a time people will put off what they talk about in Hebrews. Not failing to assemble yourself together. I could go through a lot of stuff this morning. He talked about here. He talks about uh, keeping the Sabbath day. Uh, it wasn't because uh, you couldn't work. It was the fact that you needed some rest. Have you ever had any rest like the rest you've had in Jesus Christ? Just think about these verses beforehand. Where he brought you from. Where he brought you out of sin. A lot of people... Uh, uh, through their life, uh, they search out different ways so that they could have a night or some rest and peace. It's found in cans to drink. It's found in drugs now. It's found in everything. What they're searching for is a little peace for their soul. And God gives that, and he gives a rest 
that goes beyond anything that human or man can uh, come up with this morning. Uh, that's that rest. Uh, he, he, he wants us because he knew that our body could not hold up. It needed rest. But I want to point out something. It's not just about you this morning. I want you to uh, uh, think about this. You can look at this this afternoon. It's found over uh, in the next chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 5. He says, uh, do no work. Not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your manservant, not your maidservant, not the ox, not the donkey, no cattle or strangers within thy gate or house, so to speak. I'm responsible. So are you this morning. We've got to get to a place that we trust the Lord with all our heart. It, 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 it's not possible by checking off boxes. It's only way this morning is a cry out to God in prayer. Help me, Lord, draw closer to you. He's gracious and loving enough that he comes down and scoops us up and draws him closer to himself each and every day. I'm looking forward to going home someday. I, I've done got that said. Not of nothing i done, nothing that you've done, but what Christ has already done on Calvary. All I've got to do is I tell the Lord all the time, Lord, let me finish my course. Let me run my race. Don't let me quit this close to the finish line. Help me make it from day to day. This morning, have we put in all that we can and trust the Lord God with all our heart this morning? That's what he's saying in 39. Go therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath there is none else. He is the answer to whatever you're going through. I promise you that. You say, well, I need to go to the doctor. The doctor's the one that uh, fix me up. You don't know my heart condition or my legs are out of shape or whatever the need might be. Well, I can tell you this right now, that the doctor over there may have the skills to do it, but it's going to be God on the back side of it working his miracle through his hand to get you back in shape to where you can physically walk and do the things that God wants you to do today. God deserves all the glory, the praise, and I appreciate everybody standing up at the beginning. I really do. I, I thought of that when, when I, uh, this morning. I, I appreciate the Lord most of all this morning, uh, but he deserves all of our glory and all of our praise this morning. This morning, where have you been? If you've been right up next to him, Right up next to his hand, right up next to him. Thank you. Try with all your heart to say that. But it's so easy to slip away. I know it because I've done it. This morning, I want us to pray for one another, for Mount Carmel Baptist Church, that the Spirit will rest here. As I told Solomon, my, my spirit will come down and forever be. I want him to be in this house till we go home one day, okay? I appreciate you. I love you this morning. I want to, uh, Brother Robert and them come this morning, get a song and a, as they come to the instruments. Uh, I want to just ask you, are you in your own heart? Is everything good between you and the Lord? Now, I'm talking to folks here. I'm going to point you out. I don't know your correct age. I love you, ladies. A lot of gentlemen here that a lot older. Uh, but I'm talking to you, too. I'm talking to you all, you middle-aged. I'm talking to you young folks that just had kids. I'm talking about you kids, too. That we need the Lord in our hearts more than we ever needed any time before. 
because the days are going by. This altar is a precious, precious, precious altar. It's a place where God said, I'll meet with you if you'll come unto me. I wonder if we're to the place yet that we've put things aside and said, Lord, I need you more than I need anything else, more than I need the air I breathe. That's where I want to get to. So I'm telling you right now, I'll be to go to the altar in a minute. But that's what I need. I need the Lord more every day. I'm reminded of David. He said that he went out and he numbered all of Israel. God said, you sinned against me. You shouldn't have numbered them. He had three things to choose. He wound up saying, I'll fall into the hand of the Lord. Thousands of people die. He said, Lord, let the sin be upon me. What have these sheep done? You know, I tell myself that a lot. I love you this morning. I don't want nothing to happen to you. I'll do my best to lead you the right way. Preach the word of God to you. But this morning, you have to decide. If you've wandered off the one out of the 99, all I'm asking you to do is say, Lord, I'm that one. Just be man enough or woman enough and say, Lord, I'm that one that stripped it off. He said, I'll throw it. He leaves the 99 and goes and gets it. His old song, going home, calling, coming home, coming home. I love it. Wouldn't you like to come back home this morning? Wouldn't you like to place the rest of your head, call your own again? Tenant farmers growing up in the old days, called sharecropping, never owned nothing. You can go home in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Why are you standing to your feet?